after a relatively simple question that we get asked here at Redefine Horizons on a pretty regular basis. It's a simple question. The answer's not exactly simple. It's slightly complicated, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it as simple as I can. The question is, how do I subdivide a parcel of land in California? So we get asked that a lot. Uh, people want to subdivide their parcel because that typically increases the value of the land. More parcels are worth more money than fewer parcels as a general rule. And so people will ask us that a lot. So I want to outline the, the four steps that you need to follow in California to subdivide your land. These are basic. This is a basic outline. It's not comprehensive. I'm not getting into all the nitty gritty details. This is not meant for a technical audience. The video is not meant to teach surveyors how to do subdivisions. This is to, to give you as the client, the project owner, or the client's agent, if you're a broker, an appraiser, or a lawyer, just give you a rough idea of the process that we follow as land surveyors and private land planners to subdivide a parcel in California. So here's the very first step. Step number one is we need to check the zoning. And typically we'll, we'll want to have an initial conversation with the public agency if the client's comfortable with us doing that. So we want to check the zoning because if, if you can't perform a subdivision under the zoning, uh, you basically can't pass go. You can't pass go. You can't collect $200 from the old monopoly board. It's a non-starter in a lot of cases. Now, that doesn't mean, that's not absolutely true. There are other things we can look at. We can look at, you know, get in zoning variants. Uh, we can look at, you know, uh, maybe amending the general plan or a specific plan to allow subdivision. Uh, we can look at doing a lot line adjustment so that a, that a parcel can be subdivided, potentially can meet the criteria. But it all starts with the zoning. We got to see, can you do a subdivision under the zoning? A lot of clients are surprised to find that they can't. So um, a, a large portion of the land in California is not currently zoned uh, to allow subdivision. In other words, the parcels are always already as small as you're allowed to get them under the, under the zoning. So that's the first thing you got to do, check the zoning. Second thing is, if, you, if you're allowed to do subdivision under the zoning, then the second thing we would do is we would prepare what's called a tentative subdivision map. If it's five or fewer, uh, excuse me, if it's four or fewer parcels, it can be a parcel map. If it's five or more parcels, it's going to be a subdivision map or a track map. Okay, those are those are different things, different kinds of subdivision maps. I'm not going to get into the details here. We'll do that in another video. Either case, you got to have a tentative map. A tentative map is basically a proposal for your subdivision that's going to go to the public agency to review. And in California, that's typically a city or a county. So if you're in the city, the city's going to review. If you're in the county, the county is going to review. Some smaller cities have the counties review their subdivision maps. Just depends. So you're going to put together a proposal, essentially, and tell the public agency, here's what's there right now. Here's what we're proposing to be there when we're done with the subdivision. Will you let us subdivide? That's what a tentative map does. So I've got a list of five things that go on a tentative map. So this is just kind of a general rule. Uh, sometimes agencies require additional things, but these five things are almost always needed. So you're going to need to show the existing boundary of the parent parcel that you want to subdivide, number one. Number two, you're going to need to show the existing easements that encumber the parcel. So that means your land surveyor is going to need a tile report. And he's going to need to map easements. You're going to need to show the existing topography. So what is the terrain? What does the site look like? Where are the buildings? Where are the driveways? Where are the utilities? You're going to need to show the proposed parcel configuration. So how do you plan to carve this parent parcel up into smaller pieces? And you're going to need to show any proposed easements. So a lot of times in a land development project, you need to create easements to serve the, the new parcels that are going to be made by the map, by the subdivision map. So all that needs to go on the tentative map. So tentative maps are not a small amount of work. Tentative maps are a lot of work. Okay, after you submit the tentative map, <clears throat> the agency is going to respond. The public agency, the city or county, will, will respond with what we call conditions of approval. So the agency is going to say either no, you can't do a subdivision, and here's why. Usually that's not what happens. Usually if, if you've had a good surveyor and land planner working on it, you, you're fairly confident you're going to get approved for a subdivision with what we call conditions of approval. So conditions of approval are when the agency says, yes, we will let you subdivide, but you have to meet these conditions first. And they give you a list. And usually you get conditions from public works. You get conditions from the fire marshal. You get conditions from environmental health. You get conditions from the planning department. And depending on where you're at, you know, you, you get conditions from anybody and everybody. The flood control district, the mosquito vector control district, you name it. Okay, so they're going to give you a set of conditions of approval. And what you need to do at that point is you sit down with your land surveyor, your land planner, 
you might need to work with an architect or an engineer, civil engineer, and you got to go go through and say, is it practical to meet these conditions of approval? You know, sometimes it's easy, uh, sometimes it's hard, sometimes they want you to build a bridge or put in a brand new street intersection, you know, extend a freeway. It just it's it varies a lot across jurisdiction and even across projects. So you got to sit down, look at the conditions, and say. By the time we spend the money to meet the conditions, do we have a profitable subdivision? That's kind of the key question you're trying to answer. You may have to clarify with the public agency what they mean in their conditions of approval. But assuming that you decide you can move forward and still have a, make a little money on your subdivision, you will then start the work to meet the conditions of approval. So you're going to come up with a plan, a plan to meet those conditions. If you're working with an attorney, they may put together a development agreement, which is just a contract with the city or the county about how you're going to meet the conditions and, 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 you know, the, you can phase the conditions and do different things, but it's just basically an agreement between the public agency and the developer about how the conditions are going to be met and the subdivision is going to be approved. So you start a plan, you start working to meet those conditions of approval. When you've got a sufficient amount of the conditions of approval met, the city or county will let you file what's called a final map. So you start with a tentative map. You get your conditions, then you move to a final map. The final filing of the final map is what actually creates legal parcels that you can then sell, lease, or finance. Okay, and then so the surveyor is going to take the tentative map and he's going to file a final map. Okay, and he'll probably set property quarter monuments as part of that process. At least he should be doing that. Okay, so that's basically the subdivision process in a nutshell. If you're in urban areas like San Francisco Bay Area or, or Los Angeles metro region, those subdivisions get very complicated. I personally will not do a subdivision in the Bay Area without a land attorney. You just It's that hard. Uh, over here in the Central Valley, it's a lot easier uh, depending on the type of subdivision and the, the site of the project. We will we will guide clients through that process. Uh, not we, we don't necessarily need an attorney to do that because the rules are rules are simpler and we have good relationships with our local local agencies here. So it just depends. But that's the basic process. Four steps. Check the zoning, prepare a tentative map, review the conditions of approval, meet the conditions of approval, and file a final map. So hopefully that answers that question for you guys. That question of how do I subdivide my parcel in California?